So friends, uh, this uh, webinar on tunneling preparedness is uh, being uh, organized with a objective that we are finding that although there are uh, considerable improvements in tunneling technology uh, throughout the world, but you know, India is almost, you know, although we are catching up slowly, but our pace of uh, catching up is quite slow. And uh, we think there uh, has to be a lot of enhancement in our investigation inputs. So that is the basic theme. And uh, in our opinion, if the investigations are conducted in a systematic uh, manner and quality of uh, investigations is not compromised due to shortage of funds and uh, paucity of time, uh, we will certainly prepare ourselves in a better manner, prepare better tenders and uh, 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 design better uh, and support better as far as tunnels are concerned. So with these uh, few lines, I will directly come to my presentation. Uh, first of all, let us address this question that uh, what are investigations? What do we understand uh, by investigation, which is also known as survey and investigations or explorations? This is the process of acquiring advanced knowledge of the site with an objective to prepare a cost-effective uh, uh, estimate of a tunneling project. But before we start uh, collecting our data, we must know that what we are looking for. Because structure to structure, our objective will change, our way of investigation will change, our philosophy will change, our selection of methods will change. And uh, as you know that uh, there is a wide range of methods which are available to us today, starting from simple topographical surveys, to geological mapping, pitting, trenching, drifting, drilling, etc. And uh, all this data has to be collected following standard practices. And that is one area where a lot of trust is to be given that whatever work we are doing, we have to follow standards only, then we will get the required results. And results of individual methods of investigation are interpreted and synthesized. But our main focus remains on the geological risks. We have to uh, identify each and important uh, risk uh, during our investigation program. If we, if we miss anything, that will trouble, trouble us during construction. And why we do it? Simple. First of all, we have to understand the geological model of the area or of the hill through which the tunnel is to pass or to be constructed. Optimize layout of the tunnels. There could be several uh, alternatives of joining two points, but we have to choose the best one and geology and topography. These two are very important parameters uh, for optimizing the tunnel layer. Assess the rock mass conditions, uh, forecast geological problems, particularly as I said, the risk that what are the perceived risks during the tunneling, but I'm talking only on the geological considerations and to work out support requirements for all classes of rocks and estimate cost and time required for completion of tunnel. And where we have to do it? We have to do, uh, I mean, constructing mostly these tunnels in such kind of terrain in Himalayas. This picture I have taken while I was uh, uh, in Changarchu project of Bhutan. Uh, this was the first and the maiden visit which I made uh, just before starting investigation. And you see this, this was the approximate alignment of the tunnel and you can imagine that uh, what type of data could be collected in this kind of terrain, which is totally inaccessible, which is, geology is complex, outcrops are very less, only in few nalas or uh, in the river section, which is not uh, visible here. And uh, then we have very less opportunity of deep investigative techniques. Uh, now, therefore, we have to uh, formulate a strategy or philosophy which could, which could uh, enable us to collect useful data. And I'm borrowing this term KYG from my friend, Mr. Yogendra Deva, who is here and who has the responsibility of wrapping up this uh, webinar today. So I will not go into details of this. This is know your ground. He will explain you better. What I understand from him is it is something like K 
KYC. Uh, whenever you open a bank account, banks are asking for uh, know your customer. They ask our details. So whenever I start a project, I should ask the ground that, that what are your details? But ground will not tell us. So I will have to make efforts to, to, to understand it. So this is a way of understanding uh, geology. And uh, once we have a rough model, uh, maybe on one is to 25,000 scale, then we have to tailor investigation plan according to the objective and provide additional information using suitable methods. But one important thing is that reliability and robustness of the data should be continuously reviewed and updated as the new information is obtained. Because in investigation, every day, you will have some new information. And we will have to stay alert to the variations or anomalies occurring during investigations and change the plan of investigation or strategy of investigations accordingly. If something which we did not foresee uh, comes to our notice, we certainly, we will have to take care of that particular anomaly or that particular feature uh, which is surfacing itself either in a drill hole or during geological mapping or in geophysical surveys. So we have to then, you know, give some uh, respect to the new uh, finding and introduce a new method for uh, understanding that. But there is uh, yeah, this investigations or geological and geotechnical investigations cannot be uniformly addressed for all types of tunnels, for all types of grounds. These are very, very site specific. And some of the factors which influence the investigation process are project characteristics. I mean, geometry of the project, locality, whether it is in urban area or in mountainous area, complexity of construction and complexity of geology, then topography and access as you have seen. And then the project use, because investigation will be different for different types of projects. Hydro projects have different risk appetite, whereas the nuclear and underground uh, disposal caverns have different uh, risk appetite. Uh, you you can, cannot take any chance. And therefore, you know, Barton in his classification has given that ESR parameter, uh, uh, which, which takes, uh, takes care of that. But we have to adjust our investigations according to, 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 to the type of the project. Then, Second uh, group of uh, factors which influences the stage of the problem. At PFR stage, we may apply the same tools, but on different scale, because here our aim is to develop the ground model and study various alternatives, and then choose the best one out of that. In the next stage, which is feasibility report or preliminary design stage, we have to investigate ground model at various boundaries. At DPR or detailed design stage, we have to reduce the residual level of uncertainty or level of risk. Uh, during construction, we have to adopt uh, mitigation measures. So in all the stages, this investigation will continue. Therefore, I may say that investigate, investigate, investigate till the project is constructed. And if you don't do that, you will have to continue your investigation even after construction of the project because there will be some problems uh, which will trouble you uh, later on. So then uh, the factors which may further influence our investigation plan are the geology, hydro, hydrogeology, geomorphology. For the complex ground, our efforts have to be higher and uh, we have to plan accordingly. So, I mean, this also changes with the ground. And it's only therefore in PFR stage, we have to understand that with what kind of ground we are dealing with and construction methods. All of you know that for mechanized tunneling, we have to have several additional parameters. So um, uh, whatever investigation, whatever construction method of tunnel you, you may be adopting, you might have to adjust your investigation plan accordingly. Environmental considerations many a times, uh, you know, set up several restrictions because in wildlife area, you can't do blasting. You can't take uh, your, your, your drill machines. In urban areas also, there are several other kinds of 
limitations. So that also influences our uh, investigation program. Now, what are the tools uh, available? I'm sure that uh, most of you are very, very much familiar with all that, but even for uh, benefit of some youngsters, uh, newcomers, I would, uh, I would recite whatever uh, I have jotted down here. Uh, we start with surface investigations and we have to have a topographic map before we start any kind of investigation. And normally uh, these uh, topographic maps are prepared in such a manner so that they cover all the uh, alternative alignments, portals, and uh, the, the, the map will vary from stage to stage. Then we collect data through remote sensing and satellite imagery and review all whatever information is available in the about the regional geology in geological literature. Nowadays, Bhukosh provides very good information about the available regional geology. And there are several journals or uh, technical papers which time to time, you know, they also keep on updating our knowledge of various areas uh, in which we are working. Uh, then comes to the geological mapping, uh, which is the engineering geological mapping, and which has to be done very, very carefully uh, uh, in, in all stages of the project. I will just come to that. And for understanding the lithology, we should not omit the petrography, uh, petrographic testing of all types of rocks which are uh, in the map, mapped area. Then coming to geophysical testing, I will omit it because I'm going to request Dr. Rana after my 19th slide to, to give you a complete uh, review of geophysical testing program, which will add value to the, 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 the tunnel investigation program. And the other kinds of subsurface exploration program, after we conduct geological mapping, we have a model, we have all results of geophysics, geophysical results are integrated into the geological model, and then we should plan for core drilling. The core drilling finally, uh, you know, this uh, is a very good tool if it is used uh, properly and at proper locations. So results of geophysics and engineering geological mapping will help you to decide uh, where to drill. And uh, uh, if you can choose those locations, you will certainly uh, do a lot of value addition to in updating your geological model. And these uh, boreholes are very good, uh, very good tool for estimating permeability of various uh, rock units. Then we uh, uh, we have another tool with us, which is exploratory drift. This is uh, useful, particularly for underground powerhouses, but for tunnels also, at all the portals, these are uh, done for estimating the rock mass conditions and to understand whether there is a glide, glide crack in the slope or not, some slump area so that, because for transportation tunnels, you have to construct very heavy portals. And then coming to earthquake studies, wherein you conduct site-specific earthquake parameters and micro-earthquake studies. And finally, uh, rock testing is done to supplement information about the engineering properties of the rock mass. They are both uh, lab test and in-situ test. In this, uh, our tunneling program, Professor Mahindra Singh from Durki and uh, Dr. Rajbal Singh from CSMRS, they have given very good background and very good details of various types of uh, uh, testing, uh, which could be uh, applied uh, while doing investigations for tunnels. Now coming to this uh, main uh, core area uh, of conducting investigations. And the first and the foremost uh, tool available to us is engineering geological mapping. During engineering geological mapping, we conduct rock mass characterization also. These two things together uh, cover most of the engineering geological studies for a project. And uh, how we do it, I will try to just touch upon things very, very briefly. Well, you see, before we go for rock mass characterization, we must understand that what are the 
various parameters which influence the rock mass. I mean, uh, whether the rock material itself is competent to express that I'm very good or very bad, but here you will find that we have four parameters. These are very important to understand. Uh, the rock material, degree of jointing and characteristics of each set of joint. These two things are the internal characteristics of the rock mass. Both are constituents of the rock mass. The rock material and the fracturation or the joints which are bisecting it. And then the other two parameters, the rock traces and groundwater, these are the external parameters. So therefore, now one thing is clear that same sort of rock material having the same sort of same set of uh, jointing we may have different behavior under different conditions. Uh, maybe therefore the same rock in one side of the tunnel may behave differently than the other side of rock. In case the rock stresses uh, are not constant, they change. And if the groundwater regime changes, then the same rock will uh, be different in different sort of uh, external conditions. So these all four conditions are the key to the uh, rock mass characterization program. And if you, although I'm not covering the rock mass classification part of it, but you take any classification, they are addressing these four parameters in some way or another. And all these properties are quantified using various methods. Uh, we luckily have uh, ISRM methods, which first came up in 1978. And then nowadays there are several Indian standard codes, which provide you very good guidelines. Now the procedures for Indian geological mapping and rock mass characterization, we start from the outcrop mapping, then we do scan line survey, then uh, collect, collect site photographs, which are very, very important. And then uh, with this data, whatever we collect in the field, uh, we proceed to evolve the geological model. And this process is useful for rock mass classification system in whole. So if you, if you collect all these parameters, which are divided into these three uh, heads or these three processes, you will be, you will not be missing any parameter which you may require for uh, using any classification in Vogue nowadays. And these are the list of uh, parameters as far as the rock mass description goes. We start with rock type, strength, number of joint, degree of weathering, geological structure, water inflow, and log description. And joint description includes length, direction, type of termination, persistent spacing, aperture, roughness, alteration, type of filling, and orientation. Uh, this is, uh, is small, I mean, for beginners, I have uh, you know, labeled this uh, outcrop, uh, which I have taken in some of the field in Himalayas, uh, field visits. So here you will find that uh, we are having uh, uh, foliation joints very clear. And if you see this cube, uh, you, you can see J1, uh, which is parallel to the foliation. Uh, you can see another set of joint, uh, Sorry, I did not pick up my point. Pen color. I think now I can show you. So this is the foliation and this is another joint set, which we have numbered J2. And then the third, third set of joint is this, which is looking at us, which is facing us. This is J3. So with help of cube everybody can identify. And whatever parameters I have listed out in my previous slide, that can be collected. Uh, for example, this is a, uh, the rock type is quartzite. There are three number of joint set available. The degree of jointing is uh, moderately weathered. Then you can note down roughness, spacing. Spacing is the distance between, between uh, two members of same set of joints then type of termination, aperture, orientation, uh, dip and strike, everybody knows it. Uh, then persistence and filling. And there are several other parameters which are not covered in this picture because they were not, uh, illustration is difficult to, uh, to, to cover. And then uh, the, uh, after we complete scan line, then we, after we complete uh, the, the, the outcrop mapping, then we select certain areas where we can do scan line surveys, particularly to note down all these parameters which I have spoken 
in my last two slides. Uh, for this, what we do is we select an area which provides us a continuous length of 20 to 30 meters and uh, count all the joints which are, which, which, are, which are intercepting at an imaginary line which we call scan line and how we do it is uh, like this. Here you will see this orange, thick orange line uh, from RD0 to RD30, this is uh, an imaginary line which normally runs at the waist level of the object. And whatever joints cut this line uh, at any place, those are counted. And I will show you a performer which has been developed especially for this. And the parameters along each joint are recorded. So, here, for your for uh, simplicity of understanding, uh, I have uh, colored foliation as yellow. The red joints are the cross joints, which are dipping opposite to the foliation. And then the third set is these blue dots, which are facing towards us. So these, this is a typical conjugate uh, uh, jointing pattern. So you will see that in this scanline procedure, we do not leave any joint member of the joint. Like in outcrop mapping, we may choose the best possible joint and take one reading. But here, reading of all the joints of all the sets is to be taken in case they are cutting the imaginary scanline. In the beginning, people can lay a tape or they can mark it with the paint also so that they don't miss any joint. But, you know, thereafter with, uh, with uh, practice, uh, uh, no, no, I mean, you can imagine the line at your waist level and record all these uh, joint parameters. And this is the, this is the, uh, the, the performer wherein from location to length to direction, I mean, this is the forebearing of the line. And RD0 has to be, um, uh, I mean, four, uh, RD has to increase from uh, in the direction of the four bearing. And then in case the line is inclined, then inclination is also to be noted. Easting, northing of the location along with the elevation is to be noted with GPS. And here we are not, uh, uh, not taking all these observations set wise. This is serial number, not the set number. And uh, the geological feature, it may be bedding, joint, or whatever. N number of joints, if they come, uh, uh, they cut the, uh, the imaginary line, all the joint members will be recorded, no matter they are just a, a carbon copy of each other. Uh, every joint set will be recorded. But one condition is there, that that joint member has to be more than one meter. Otherwise, uh, the spacing uh, will, be, uh, will be adversely affected. And then with these parameters, I will not re uh, repeat for saving time, uh, we uh, take joint uh, JV, volumetric count of joint at three locations, one at the beginning, one, at, uh, one in the center, and another towards the end. And in case you are having, you are lucky to have a Smith hammer, please use it for uh, finding out UCS, otherwise your geological hammer is the best companion. And then some photographs are also taken. And uh, after taking uh, these scan lines, then the data is to be merged for each geostructural unit. Uh, the data will be merged. The stereogram will be plotted. J1, J2, J3 analysis will be done. And average parameters for it, one geostructural unit will be uh, handy to you when you go for uh, go for and go for uh, rock mass classification. And now the time has come that I will request uh, Dr. Rana to please uh, help us in understanding what we what value addition can be done in an investigation program uh, through geophysical techniques. Dr. Rana, please.